Microsoft Forms is great. With just a few clicks, you can create an amazing questionnaire and send that across the globe to anyone to respond to. I've used it in multiple locations where I asked feedback from training sessions that I've done. Or we also have a maturity model to assess how mature our customer is regarding project management, risk management, stakeholder management. Uh, and I even used it for getting feedback from the last five years of doing YouTube uh, content creating. But there is a little feature uh, that you need to be aware of in order to create good reports in Microsoft Forms. So let's have a look at Microsoft Forms. Here's an example of a lessons learned form that I created in just five minutes. And it has a couple of questions and these questions are collected in responses. Now out of the box, Forms has a nice little report that you can look at. So text-based is obviously going to look like this, um, but there is also nice visualizations of how the people responded to specific types of questions. But then again, this is a report that doesn't have that much flexibility. There's no way to see if throughout the time we perform better because there's no link between the moment we uh, submitted this request and the results of that request. So we don't have a trend up or a trend down. Now, obviously, Power BI is the way to go with uh, regards to these types of reports. But there's a small issue. When I want to report on Microsoft Forms, I need to download the Excel file. So I'm going to download the Excel file and that's where the issue is, right? This is just a local downloaded file that I can use to build a report on and I can do another download when I have more responses and I can use that in my Power BI report. Obviously it will work, but it's manual actions that we need to do. And that is something as an IT consultant of course, I'm not going to go for because we want to automate this stuff, right? There is a solution though. What if I told you you could get the Excel sheet to update based on every new response? And what if I told you you have an option to be a co-owner of that form and others could build their own reports on top of the data? What if it's not even that difficult to do? Excited? Well, Here's what you need to do if you haven't created a form yet. And after we've talked about that, I'll show you how to upgrade your already existing forms so that you can leverage this option as well. First thing that we need to do is we need to move away from forms.microsoft.com. We need to go to Teams. This is a team I probably used for a earlier test on another video that I did. Doesn't really matter. What I do want to do is I want to go to the plus sign here and I want to click on open a new tab and I'm going to search for Microsoft Forms. So Forms and here we go. Here you have the option to add a new uh, Forms tab into the channel. I can create a new form and I can add existing forms that are already on that group and that's a little hint there with the creation of teams we create a microsoft office group and with a microsoft office group we have shared ownership and with shared ownership you also have a shared onedrive so let's make that um, example form here and from within teams i can already start building out this um this form because this is the edit option or the edit tab for that specific form. So I can uh, change the style just like I would be able to do within ooh, cookies, cake. Who doesn't love cake? Let's ask that. Let's set that as a required answer. Let's see if Dave doesn't like cake. So this is a really simple example of a form, but the best thing is yet to come. 
I can fully interact with this form as if it was within Microsoft Forms itself. I have the responses, I have, I have a preview option, I have styles, I have collecting responses, presenting is an option as well. But this is also part of the Microsoft Forms environment itself. Now be aware, this is actually not a this is actually not a team, but this is part of a team as a channel. I just pinned this one um, on top so that we have that in here. So on first go, I couldn't find the final test because it is not a group. The group actually is called the project corner because that is the top level. That is where the Microsoft 365 group is created. So let's navigate to Microsoft Forms. And here I already see that I have my example for the video. I already collected 11 responses. Uh, cake is a very popular topic, it seems. And down below I see my groups and you might want to expand this if you see a lot of groups. Um, and here is the project corner. It has five forms in there. So let's click on it. And here we see my example for the video. Now this is the hidden feature and it might look a little anticlimactic, but there's actually a really good reason why this is uh, such a powerful feature. It's now not only called a new form, but it's called a new group form. So there's shared ownership. But if I click on the example for video and I navigate to the responses, I can see that I can open this into Excel. Well, that almost looks the same as it did in the previous example, but this is now an Excel online file, which is a vast difference from a normal file that is downloaded and doesn't have a connection. This one actually does have a connection. So let's open that in Excel and I can even find out where that file is stored because that is important, of course. So the location is the project corner and then final test, which is the name of the channel, of course, where we stored it. I'll collect the URL for now. I'll navigate to another page. And from here, you'll see that folder final test. And right there is the example for video. That is an online file. And if I click on that, it opens up the file obviously, just like it did uh, when I clicked on the responses. Now, one key difference is this is an interactive and synced version of the Excel. So if I collect a 12th response, let's just do that right now, submit another response. Uh, Dave doesn't like cake. Let's submit and let's navigate to this page and let's refresh. And there we have the 12th response. So now no longer you do, who is this? SharePoint app. Well, the SharePoint app obviously is the thing that is pushing this information towards the uh, Excel sheet. Uh, I can add another response and it's going to be me that doesn't like cake this time. And all I need to do is refresh and now I have 13 responses. So this is the way to get forms to become a enterprise uh, solution for collecting your questionnaire responses. All right, all right. So what does this look like when we navigate to Power BI? So in here, I am opening up a SharePoint folder connection. So I'm going to get data, SharePoint folder, this is the folder that I want to navigate to. If I click on OK, I'll walk you through the steps. I'm going to connect to the Excel for video. And in there, I am going to open up table one. Table one is the name of this table. How do you find that out? You click on any piece of this table, navigate to table design. And in here, you see the name of that table. Now, because a forms extract or a forms response is always just one table. It's always going to be table one. So just be aware, uh, you don't need to search a whole lot to get that. 
And then the next last step is extracting that table. And here you see that we have information. Uh, now this was an earlier um, data extraction. So let's refresh. And now I have 13 responses. All right, let's close and apply. And let's see that in our lovely Power BI re uh, report. So let's refresh. And that looks awesome. So now we have 13 responses. We see that almost 50% is Dave that doesn't like cake. Um, now, this is something that you already see within the form example is itself. So if we navigate to here, we see, that, yeah, it's it's roughly the same. Uh, but the core difference is that I can now see how many responses we get compared to which date. And this line currently only has two options. Just wait and see what we uh, get if there's more responses coming in over time. So now we know why we want to have that new group form setting instead of a new form individually. What about that lessons learned form that I created earlier? Uh, it still has my name on it instead of the name of the group that's assigned to it. There's a simple solution for this and it is called uh, move to group. So, so the ellipsis move to a group and I choose a group to own it. And here we are, move to group. And now you see that the ownership is uh, transferred to the project corner. There's three responses. Let's just check if we have that cloud in Excel. And we do. So now we have the option to uh, create beautiful, stunning, refreshing, synchronized reports in Power BI. I hope you like this video and see you next time.